Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about using the Edit Mesh tool in Character Creator 3. So we're going to bring in an item of clothing and uh, conform it to our character using the Edit Mesh tool and skin weighting and then we'll go from there. I'll show you how you can apply that to your character uh, individual pieces of clothing one by one. So you can also import in your, your entire Daz character with clothing already applied using the Transformer tool, but in this case we're going to import in the clothing items uh, one by one. And we're going to be using the uh, suit here, the Rogue Element Outfit for Genesis 3 Female. A nice snazzy looking outfit, uh, be it impractical or not, uh, as most uh, female fantasy armor is, but it uh, looks really pretty nice. I'll provide a, a link in the description for you if you want to check this out uh, on your own time. Now basically the reason why you'd want to use the Edit Mesh tool is um, many. there's many reasons. Actually you can see here a before and after comparison image if we uh, focus on the character's calf or her midsection there, or the uh, left side of uh, her arm there, you can see there's breakages in the mesh. Okay, her skin mesh is breaking through the clothing mesh, something that we don't want to do. So we can use the Edit Mesh tool to resolve that. We're going to talk about skin weighting, which is when you apply uh, motions or animations to your character. Uh, the clothing needs to conform along with the animations. You can see a before and after of this. And also when you uh, change your character's body mesh, your clothing also needs to conform to uh, changes in your character's, uh, your body mesh uh, to make a more heavyset character or more muscular character. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. Okay, so on the screen what, we're, what we have right now is a Daz Genesis 3 female character we've imported in using the Transformer tool. So let's go ahead over to create and create a clothing item uh, on their cloth hair accessories right here. I'm just going to select that OBJ for the armor. Okay, so this is kind of like the corset midsection of the armor. Okay, and we're going to talk about conforming this to our character's body. Okay, so just like this, you can see it applies to your character. Uh, if I press the W hotkey for my movement gizmo, you'll see it'll now appear down by the feet. So that's something that we don't want, obviously. We want it to be around the, uh, the mesh of the item that we're uh, applying here. So we can go down to our uh, attributes section over here, attributes tab. And go over to the down at the bottom to the pivot section and just click on the middle pivot section right here and that'll bring our gizmo up there a more uh, practical area where they can we, where we can then uh, put it into position uh, by clicking on the green y-axis there something like this and maybe bring it a little bit further up on the uh, blue axis just like this okay it really depends on what you're going for you can also use the r hotkey okay to scale it slightly i like to use the, the r hotkey to scale um, items slightly just like this you can see we can scale it like this I don't want to be too accurate because I need to uh, edit the mesh a little bit later on here as well so we have a couple parts in the back there that we can uh, that we can edit we probably need to move this a little bit further back as well there we go just bring that a little bit further back and I think we should be uh, fairly good at that point okay maybe there's a little bit of poking through at the front there uh, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to change my character's uh, skin mesh to a very white skin mesh. So I'm going to go to the C manager here. We're going to select our character base and change the shading mode to smooth. And that'll just kind of give it a smooth white appearance with no texture on it. So a little bit of higher contrast so we can see a bit better. And then we can go ahead and delete the other items of clothing under the character as well. Like these uh, shorts here and just double click on the bra there and delete that as well. Okay, so the first item of business here is to skin this item of clothing to your character's mesh. So when you do an animation, the clothing will conform to your character's body shape. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is just go over here to Transfer Skin Weights and just choose a default template and go ahead and select Apply. Easy as that. And once you do this, it's going to automatically uh, skin that clothing item to your character's body. So if we apply an animation, like going to the Content Manager, Let's go over here to the motions tab or pose tab rather uh, section and go to motion plus or the template tab here let's try a female pose like this enticing one for example okay and you can see that uh, will conform to the body shape again don't worry about the mesh breakage we'll fix that a little bit later on um, but you can apply a couple of different motions and see that uh, that clothing for the most part will conform to your character's uh, uh, pose Okay, what you want to do is now return it to the uh, st uh, standard T-Pose. So we'll go to the Motion tab here, or Motion folder rather, and just choose a T-Pose, which is the recommended pose when you're editing the mesh on your character. Okay, let's close down Transfer Skin Weights 
And with our uh, Bustier, uh, whatever it is selected here, we'll go over to the Edit Mesh tool, okay, under Modify. And what's going to come up is a bunch of green dots, and this is called our Vertex mode, okay? You can see we have a few different modes here at the top. We have Vertex, Face, Element, and Sculpt, and I'll walk you through all these momentarily. Let's start at Vertex. So with Vertex, if we zoom in, you can see we have all these green selection vertexes. We can click on them, and they will turn red, okay? If we click on them one by one, they'll select individually. If I hold control, I can click and select multiple vertex points, okay, just like this. And if I hold control and click on the ones that are already selected, I can then deselect them one by one, just like this. If I want to select large swaths of area on my mesh, I can go ahead and hold shift, and you can see our cursor will have a little plus on it. And we can click and drag and select multiple vertices, all right? If we hold control and shift, then our uh, cursor there changes to a minus icon, and we can click and drag and deselect anything that's already selected, okay? Fairly simple. Now we have ignore back face here selected as well, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Let's first go on to face mode now. So face mode is essentially the same thing, except now we're selecting faces. So I can hold control and click multiple faces just like this, and if I hold control, I can also deselect them one by one as well. If I hold shift, same plus cursor comes up. I can hold shift and select areas, hold control shift, and I can deselect individual areas just like this. Okay, deselect everything. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, now uh, when it comes to elements, if I select element here, we can select individual elements on our character's body as well. Okay, so I can like click this little uh, kind of wire underneath the uh, the bra here. This is a separate element. This one over here is also a separate element. Okay, so there's a lot of different individual elements on our characters uh, on the clothing mesh rather. Um, I can hold Control and select multiple elements like this, and again holding Control and deselecting them one by one, just like this. If I hold uh, control and, uh, or if I hold shift rather, and I select uh, the selection box here, basically it's going to add everything that our, our, our selection box was touching, uh, every element that it was touching to our selection area, okay? So notice that all these little elements down here were not selected. Um, however, those two uh, buttons, I believe, these ones are selected and these other ones are not, okay? And then you can just uh, click on individual elements one by one again to select them just like this. There you go. Okay. Easy enough. And you can control shift and click and drag to deselect uh, whatever, same as uh, the face and vertex. All right, let's take a look now at, uh, let's go back to face uh, temporarily here and look at ignore back face. So fairly simple stuff. If we wanted to select, you know, just the front area of our character, we could go to this angle here and, you know, click and drag on a selection area like this. And if we go to the back, it wouldn't select the back faces there. Okay. Just like this, we, uh, you know, something like this. It's not going to select the back faces, anything that's not visible. Uh, if we deselect ignore back face and we uh, click and drag like this, it's going to select all the back faces there as well, all the way back to the middle. Okay. So it really depends on what angle you're at. Again, it'll select or deselect a certain amount, uh, just like that. Okay. This one will probably be in close to a 90 degree angle anyways. Okay. You can press the F hotkey to get a front 90 degree angle and get a total symmetrical selection that way. Okay, so that's uh, that, and you can also increase or decrease your selection area, okay, using this selection tool right here. Uh, so we can use increase or grow selection area, just like that. It'll grow uh, face by face, and you can decrease the selection area, just like that. Okay, fairly easy stuff. We'll talk about soft selection in just a moment. All right, so now that you're familiar with how to select the mesh on your character, let's talk a little bit now about how to edit the mesh. We're going to talk about a couple of various ways that we can do that. Okay, so you can see we positioned the uh, armor here fairly well on the character. However, just on the back here, we have a little bit of an issue with the mesh popping through, um, the character's skin mesh popping through on the both sides here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of methods you can use to uh, fix this. And the first method we're going to talk about is sculpting. Okay, so let's go over here to our Modify tab and to our Attributes and down here to Edit Mesh. Okay, make sure that our armor is selected and go to Edit Mesh. And there's a couple of things we can use, the vertex, the face, um, elements, so we can select things and move them, or we can just choose Sculpting. Okay, so we're going to choose talk about Sculpting right here. 
Under sculpting, you have, uh, you have the push, you have the pull, and you have smooth. And then we have intensity, radius, and fall off. So intensity is like the strength. The radius is like the size of your circle. Okay. And the fall off is kind of like, uh, how strong it is. We'll talk a little bit more about fall off and, and bias uh, in just a moment when we talk about vertex, uh, modification. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the uh, hotkeys here. Okay, so intensity, you can see if we mouse over, you can see B plus left mouse button. That's holding the B key and pressing the left mouse button will allow you to uh, modify the uh, intensity. So if I hold the B key and click and drag my mouse, you can see the slider go up and down like that. So we don't have to move our mouse over to the modified panel to do this. If I hold uh, B and the right mouse button, that'll adjust the radius of my circle like this, okay? And if I hold the B key and the middle mouse button, that's going to adjust the fallout value. Okay, just like that. All right, you can't really see an effect on that yet, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay, so, uh, you know, the easiest way to fix an issue like this, if it's very simple, would just be to use pull. Now, if you're using pull, you can actually hold the control key, and you can also toggle between pull and push. If I left-click right now, I'm going to be pulling the mesh, just like this. Okay, fine and dandy. If I don't want to do that, I can hold control and it'll toggle over to push. You can see if I hold control right there, it'll toggle over to push and then we can push the mesh back in. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but in some cases, obviously you want to control and pull, push and pull at various times and you don't want to always be going over here to select. Okay. And then there's also smooth. Okay. If you want to smooth, you have to hold the shift button. Okay. So shift will toggle over to smooth and you can see we can smooth the mesh over here a little bit, just like that. Okay, so those are the hotkeys for, you know, uh, this this sort of uh, sculpting. Now, if I want to, like, you know, pull this mesh out, you can see here that it's looking okay. However, if we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that our element, the the top element here, right here, is kind of being twisted and, and it's not correct. Okay, so that's something that we wouldn't want to do. Um, you could, you know, we'll just control Z that a couple times here just to get the uh, original value back here. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so what I would recommend doing in this case is a combination of sculpting and uh, and vertex editing. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and uh, uh, take my radius down. Okay, so we're going to just take the radius down. We're going to pull this area down here up a little bit. Okay, and we can probably increase that intensity so we get an easier effect. Okay, just like this. And, you know, just avoid touching that top part. Now, if we pull the top part like this, you can see, okay, that looks fine. But another way you can do this is you can use vertex editing, okay? And I'll show you this right now. Let's go over here to vertex. And with vertex, what you can do is you can select a certain part of the mesh, like just this little area right here, okay? And you can see those uh, little vertexes will be selected in red. And then you can just go ahead and select soft selection. Now here's the bias, which I talked about, which is similar to the uh, fall off in under the sculpt uh, tab. Okay, so if I m uh, change the bias here, you can see the yellow area, the intensity spreads when the bias is high. If we want to focus on a small area like this area right here, what you want to do is you want to make that bias really small. And you also want to make the radius really small. So we're only focusing on this little yellow part right here. And then of course, press the W hotkey for move. And once we do that, we can then move it out just like this individually. Okay. So you can see that result is a lot better than uh, the previous result we had. And after this, what we can do is we can just go back to sculpt and we can smooth it out. So go to sculpt and we can press the smooth. Let's pump up that intensity for the smooth and the radius maybe. And just smooth out this area. Okay. Let's see, we can uh, smooth that out nicely. Just like that. And maybe this little element area up here, we can smooth this out slightly as well. Just take the radius down. And you kind of want to make sure that uh, you wait until the, um, the circle is kind of on the side like that. Okay. And just smooth it out so it's nice and nice and smooth. Smooth it out so it's nice and smooth. All right, great English. All right, there we go. Okay, so uh, that is fixing that issue. Uh, we can do the same thing on this one, or we can just, you know, use the uh, different way to, to fix it. I'll show you a different way uh, using the uh, face editing. Okay, I like to use the vertex myself. Uh, let's take a little bit of a look at uh, face editing as well. Now, of course, make sure that you have ignore back face on. This is very important. You don't want to be selecting uh, faces on the other side of the character. So we can just use soft selection for this as well and maybe just do something like this, okay? And you can see we select only this, these bottom parts here. And I can press the W hotkey, and we can pull them out just like this, okay? We can pull those out separately, just like that, right? Looks fine. And then we can, you know, smooth that out. And for the vertex, 
Uh, we'll choose vertex and then I'll just select these elements here on the top, just like this. Okay, maybe a little bit more targeted like that. And we can just press the W hotkey and pull this, these ones out separately. Okay, so this is sort of the methodology that I like to use personally um, for when doing this. And this one obviously needs to be smoothed out. So I'll have to go to smooth it, smooth it, bop it, smooth it. All right, just like this. And uh, you should be able to get a fairly decent result. There we go. It sort of restores that uh, wiry element there on the top. And we can smooth the, uh, increase the radius there and smooth this area out here as well on the bottom. Okay, so that's how you can use a combination of all the different uh, types of mesh editing to, uh, you know, to resolve issues like that. You can see fairly good on the back here. It's maybe a little bit jagged, pushed out a little bit too much on the back. So again, um, I'd probably want to smooth this out even further. Uh, that's why it's always important to take a look at multiple angles, you know, from your object there. And just smooth it out nicely like that. We pulled it out. We didn't know our own strength when we pulled it out. All right, let's take a look now at finally just editing an element. So on the front here, you can see that this little section, there's an element that's kind of misplaced, all right? The mesh is uh, kind of poking through. So what we're going to do here is they'll select element now. And this little item right here is actually an individual element. And we can move this around. We can press the W hotkey and move it around individually. Okay, we can bring it out like this. Um, but now it's kind of popping through the, uh, the, the strings. So obviously we don't want it to be popping through the strings. We'll kind of place it somewhere like this. But then if we place it below the strings, we have that issue where, hey, the white, the character's skin is popping through. So uh, in a situation like this, uh, what you normally want to do is you probably want to hide the, the character's mesh underneath. Okay, so what I would do in this case is just, you know, place this thing right here and uh, we'll actually just take it over here temporarily to the side, okay? And what we're going to do is now we're going to select the character. Uh, we're going to go out of Edit Mesh here, uh, select our character, the CC base, and then we'll edit the character mesh, okay? And for this one, we'll just choose Faces. Okay, this is a fairly simple process. Face, and I'm going to click and drag and select all these faces here. And you can see they get selected in pink, okay? And what we can do here is we can simply hide these uh, mesh items just like that, okay? And then when we do that, there's not going to be anything poking through, and we can place that element nicely inside, and uh, and uh, you know all all is right in the world, okay? So once we once we've hidden the the meshes that we want, then we can go back to our uh, our armor right here, select the armor, and just choose our element, okay? This one right here. And we'll just place it in the correct position by using the W hotkey again, just like this. There you go. Okay, so now it's beneath the uh, the section that it's supposed to be beneath. And uh, uh, let's just move it a little bit over here. There you go. Just want to make sure it's below those strings and, and nicely positioned there. And then we go out of added mesh mode here. You can see, there it is, all correct and in the right place. And we don't see any of the mesh that's hidden underneath. The character okay because we only hit the mesh in this area so that's how you can actually select separate areas of your character and edit the mesh or sorry hide certain faces of the mesh okay so when we're done all of this I will have a beautiful looking character a warrior princess it looks just like this we've uh, resolved all the mesh issues uh, obviously I put a little bit more armor on here but you can see that uh, we have a very uh, nicely fit suit of armor on our character and that's all done using the edit mesh tools within character creator 3. all right so thanks so much for watching everyone hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial about uh, editing the mesh on your character uh, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and our youtube channel as well and i'll see you in the next video